So in the previous video, we had some we completed some basic concepts of QTP parameterization. We created some parameterized QTP scripts, and we used a bunch of multiple values and data for executing our QTP script. So in this video, we'll explore and this the concept of variables in QTP and VB scripting. So let's try to understand what variables are and what variables exactly do for us. So let's try to understand the concept of variables. Let me just open up uh, paint. Okay, so just imagine, imagine a phone book. We all have cell phones, we, I believe, and um, and if you spend your daily lives without a cell phone, hopefully you at least use some kind of cell phone, an iPhone or a Galaxy, or Samsung Galaxy. Those are the most popular phones currently on the market. So all those cell phones could be an Android, it could be an iOS iPhone, uh, it could be a Nokia Symbian. All those cell phones will have notebooks. So why do we even use a phone book or a physical notebook now? What is the what are the benefits of using a phone book? Just imagine for a second having a phone, having a cell phone. Let me try to draw a picture. It'll help you to recall the memory of physically. Okay, let's see, I'll just put a little of this. Put some values. So here's my cell phone. And just put some buttons. Buttons for entering the numbers and everything. Okay. So let's imagine a cell phone, but of course my drawing is pretty bad and it looks uh, pretty much like an iPod mini. But anyways, that's fine. We have different, or we store different things. All those phone numbers of our friends, our family members, our work contacts, our co-workers, and so on. We store all those all those phone numbers in our phone book. Now, if we did not have a phone book, what what we have to do, like in the past, what we had to do is we used to write those phone numbers down. You used to write it on a physical notebook, uh, notepad, or on a physical diary. You used to write those numbers. So now, when you dial a phone, any phone number from your phone these days, we do not we do not dial the full number unless you're calling the person for the first time. You basically go to your phone book and find that name. If you are if you need to call Mike, then you go into your phone book and you find Mike and and press press the call button and reach Mike you do not really memorize the phone number instead. Instead, you store his phone number and you give it a name. So Mike or David or James, whoever it needs to be. So you're storing his phone number and you're replacing the phone number by a unique name, right? That's exactly the concept of variables. So variables are nothing but those names that are in your phone book. So if you scroll through your phone book and you see hundreds, if you're a busy person, thousands of names, these are the variables in QTP. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. So in this script, we have used parameterization and some external data uh, 
internal QTP data tables instead of having the data within the script. Now, let's try to use a variable instead of parameterization or QTP data table. To do that, we basically have to, let me show you how exactly we can implement that variable. So on the web edit box for email, let's, let's put a value. Let's delete this value first. So I'm deleting the value after dot set. So right now I don't have anything, right? Let me come up with a variable name, a variable name for the email ID. Let me name it as variable underscore email. Okay. And let me say, or let's say variable underscore email is equal to email1 at yahoo.com. And let me just delete everything else. Delete, delete all the data tables sheet. I'm not going to use that in this script. So we're not using them. So let's delete them. Okay. So we don't have data coming from anywhere. Dot set is blank. Password is blank. So we have assigned a variable called variable underscore email. Basically, I'm saying that let's assume that this is your phone number. This is the phone number of James. So the value of the variable email one at yahoo.com is the phone number for make. So I'm saying that my phone, please store the phone number of Mike as Mike. So I am saying, please store email one at yahoo.com as variable email. So I'll do the same for variable underscore. I can name them anything. You can name them variable email. You can name them V email, anything, anything. Just like you don't have any restrictions on your phone book of what you name people, you don't really have any restrictions in key2p or VB script. So just for my better understanding, I'm naming it variable email and variable password. So variable password is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. So the reason I'm not putting a quote here is because when you have numbers, you don't really need a quotation. But if you have strings like letters and numbers and symbols or a combination of all of them, then you need a quotation. So I have assigned the email as a value as a variable, and it's a value of this variable, password as this variable. So at this point, on the web edit of email dot set, I can basically say variable underscore email. So when I say dot set under variable underscore email, it will basically take the value from here, and it will put email one at yahoo.com. Okay. And I can do the same for password. So I'm replacing the variable values with variable name, replacing the variable value with the variable name. Okay. So let's try to run this test. Let's put a wait statement between the email and the password. Let's say wait, wait three. And that means wait for three seconds before you enter the password. Let's put another wait after the password. So this way we can physically see what's happening. Otherwise it's too fast. Let me save this. So again, notice that we don't really place, we don't place by variables. We place values by the variables. So let's run this and see what happens. So 
So it's navigating to facebook.com, as we can see. Then it enters email one at yahoo.com, then enters a password, and then clicks on login, and it closes a browser. So you notice that, let's wait for the test to stop. Okay, so you notice that it did not put variable underscore email as a variable in the email box, right? The reason is we assigned that as a value, and the value is this, email1 at yahoo.com. So it did enter email1 at yahoo.com in this place, and it entered the password value, which is this. So this is the concept of using variables. A very simple, very straightforward concept, but the question is, why are we doing this? Why are we using variables? The reason is, when you have a lot of input data, a lot of different sets of data to input, input and output, it's a good practice to use variables. So, in the beginning of your test, you can have all of your input data and output data and everything, you can name everything as a variable and you can assign the values in here. So it's much easier to use those variables over and over. You can reuse them within the same script over and over. That saves you a lot of time. And this script is very small, very tiny. You don't really see a lot of difference, but when you have a bigger script, you'll see that variables are very handy and useful.